Breath of the Wild has been out for six years now, and over this time, the game has been pulled apart and examined in extreme detail. From this, many, many glitches have been discovered, and in this video, I'm going to go through a massive 50 glitches, with some very well-known ones and some more unique glitches you most likely have never seen. The list isn't in any order, and I won't be going into full detail with each of these glitches. Let me know down below what your favourite glitch is, and subscribe if you enjoy the video. First up is the Bullet Time Bounce, or more commonly known as BTB. This glitch is one of the earlier movement glitches, which was a massive part of moving around the map quickly, and was a huge part of speedruns. This glitch consists of landing on an enemy while in bullet time to launch Link across the map at super fast speeds. Since the discovery of BLSS, this glitch hasn't seen much use, but may make its return in Tears of the Kingdom. Bow Lift Smuggle Slide, or BLSS, is one of the main current movement glitches in Breath of the Wild. This glitch involves the combination of bow smuggling and weird collision with the object Link is holding, which is normally a bomb, this causes Link to float through the air at super fast speeds, and due to this is used several times across speedruns, or if you just want to travel around Hyrule super fast. Wind bombing is one of the most well-known glitches in this game, as it's known well both across casual players and speedrunners. It makes moving around the map both horizontally and vertical so much easier and quicker. All that is happening with this glitch is that you use one bomb to launch the other bomb into Link, which will send him flying. Due to the amount of control with direction and magnitude you can get with this glitch, it makes it easily one of the best glitches in this game. The stasis launch is a very simple glitch, as it's just Link getting launched by a stasis object. This glitch can be done on many different objects, but isn't useful very often, excluding certain necessary spots in the any% speedrun. It's outclassed by almost all the other movement glitches, but it's still quite funny to watch. The basic shield clip involves first getting skew by shield surfing on specific geometries around the map. The shield skew will look something like this whenever you try and shield surf. Using this skew, Link can now clip into certain shrines at other hard to get places. This glitch is very useful in speedruns, as it allows you to get into shrines without needing to activate the first tower, which shaves off a lot of time. Similar to the basic shield clip, this clip is much harder to perform as it requires very specific timing for the clip to actually work. This glitch allows Link to clip into more flat surfaces, such as a door or pillar, and overall is quite similar to normal shield clipping, as it both requires skew and uses a shield. The fall damage cancel is only really relevant before you get the paraglider, as it becomes pretty redundant afterwards. This glitch is quite simple, only requiring you to have a weapon and shield, as to perform it you just throw your weapon and switch shield right before you hit the ground, and Link won't take any fall damage. This glitch is quite an advanced one that I won't go into full detail here, but it pretty much just changes any item in your inventory to a different item in your inventory. It does this by abusing a thing called menu overloading, and also messing with given values in Link's inventory. This glitch is quite a useful one as it allows you to get rare items super easily. Moon jumping is a very funny looking glitch that allows Link to jump in the air infinitely, as well as cause some other weird physics based things to occur. To set this glitch up, you break the horseback archery range by landing on a different horse to the one you started with, and then the game will just completely break and from now on you will have the moon jump effect. You can use this glitch to skip certain shrines or just get a different view of Hyrule. This glitch isn't really a useful one but is quite hilarious. The glitch uses either a Hinox or Stalnox to completely break the game's physics engine, and causes objects to start floating and spinning around. The glitch has no real use except to look hilarious, and it's just fun to mess around with. The Shrine Apparatus Storage glitch uses the Shrine Apparatus to store certain bits of game data at that point in time. This includes Link not taking hot or cold damage at extreme temperatures, as well as just screwing over the paraglider. This glitch can also be used for other glitches, such as using the Shrine Apparatus Storage glitch and a little bit of time, you can get max hearts from the statue right next to Hatena Village here. It uses the apparatus storage to store hearts that you've taken out of the statue to duplicate the amount of hearts you can actually pull out of the statue, and if done multiple times, you will eventually have max health. The infinite stamina glitch is almost exactly the same as the infinite heart glitch, except instead of pulling out hearts, you just pull out stamina vessels. Weapon Modifier Corruption is one of the most complex glitches in Breath of the Wild, but at its most basic, uses other item values to give insane modifier on Link's weapons. These include 10 shot bows, super high damaging swords, and even some really weird ones like slow moving throwables. This glitch is super useful in more longer runs, as having these super powerful weapons make combat much easier. This is a very simple glitch that uses Magnesis to allow Link to fly on minecarts. By Magnesising the bottom minecart, it allows you to raise the top minecart Link is standing on into the air and will allow you to fly. Whistle sprinting is probably the most basic glitch in this game, but is also super useful as it can be used anywhere on the map and just makes traveling slightly faster. All that this glitch entails is just holding down the whistle button while mashing B. 
This will cause Link to run while also not using up any stamina. The Master Sword Skip is a super easy way to get the Master Sword without having to get any extra hearts. All you have to do is set up a campfire in a specific spot next to the Master Sword, and as you pass time, mash A. If done correctly, you will now have the Master Sword with only 3 hearts. This glitch uses the previously mentioned moon jumping glitch to break Sidon out of the Varuda fight and allows us to take him wherever we want in the world. This doesn't really have any use, but it's still quite funny seeing how he interacts with the world. All you need to do for this glitch is to talk to Sidon while in the air, and as soon as you gain control again, jump off his back and you can now take him wherever you want. You can actually just use a horse to clip through several different walls in the game, and all you need to do for this glitch is to first line up your horse against a wall while facing away and just jump off. Mid-air, you are going to want to save your game. When you then reload the save, you'll find yourself inside that wall. To get the bowl of light in Link's possession for use outside of the Dark Beast fight, all you need to do is clip outside the barrier and head far away from the fight. To clip outside, head to the spot here, get skew, and then clip through right next to this tree here. If done correctly, you will now be out of the fight and can explore Hyrule with the Bulb Light. You can actually perform something called a perfect parry with Darude's protection, which will stop you from taking damage and won't use up a charge. To do this, you just need to tap ZL at the right time instead of holding it down, and if you do it right, a charge won't be used but the effect will still work. Bow spinning allows Link to spin around his bow like a two-handed weapon while keeping the elemental effects from the main weapon. To set this up, you just need a two-handed weapon and then you begin spinning it by holding Y. Quickly press Z, R and B at the same time and you should start to see Link spinning around with his bow. This is just a funny quick little glitch that messes with bullet time and launching objects. To do this, you just cryonis under an object and as the pillar is rising, enter bullet time. Depending on the timing will change how fast the object is launched and can lead to some very funny occurrences. Horse sliding launches Link off his horse in varying directions and speeds and is super easy to set up. All you need to do is mount the horse on a slope while first holding X and up on the D-pad. Then you let go of X, hold Z, L and A. Now let go of up on the D-pad and then finally let go of Z, L and A. Now whenever you dismount from your horse, you will then be launched away from the horse with the direction depending on the original slope. We can smuggle weapons by just using a bomb, and from this we can see a bunch of dumb animations and even cheese torch puzzles by smuggling a torch, as it won't be affected by anything such as water. This glitch also makes Link look quite strange, as he will use one hand for two-handed weapons or other funny looking weapons. This simple glitch just makes the stamina recover faster than usual, and all you need to do is hold down ZL, ZR and A, then press X, and you'll see Link do this funny little thing on the horse. After that, you will have full stamina and be able to keep doing this glitch whenever it gets slow again. This is a super funny way of getting a ton of Guardian parts, as by flipping certain broken Guardians over the map and pushing them around, it will cause them to start spurting out seemingly infinite amount of Guardian parts, from screws to cores. This glitch not only looks stupid, but is actually a valid way of getting a lot of ancient parts. To easily get a bunch of arrows, all you have to do is equip a multi-shot bow, the more shots the better, and all you're going to need is a campfire. Now you're just going to want to light the bow and shoot the arrows at a nearby wall or object, and you can now collect the arrows and you'll have much more than when you started. To not take burn damage without any type of fire resist potion or armor, you can use the burn timer reset glitch. All you need for this one is a two-handed weapon, and to reset the timer, start swinging then let go. This will reset the burn timer and can be useful in this one shrine challenge, but otherwise it's just a super niche glitch. This glitch allows us to one-shot bosses using specifically placed arrows and cutscenes, as if the arrow is shot just at the right time and at the right spot, during the cutscene the arrow hitbox will be constantly damaging the boss and also making it spaz around like this. The arrow shot has to be super precise for this glitch to work though, so it can take a lot of practice. You can actually straight up skip the entire DLC final trial in the Shrine of Resurrection, all by just moon jumping all the way to the boss arena, and it skips all the puzzles leading up to it. This glitch saves a lot of time compared to normally completing the trial, but keep in mind you still will actually have to fight Maz Koshia, so be prepared for that. By using the camera room, you can make whatever items you want float up into the sky. This can be useful when used with the item duplication glitch, because you can put a lot more items down as the floating items do not count towards the 10 items that can be on the floor at one time, meaning that you can have tons of floating items out at once. It's normally not possible to remove the bowl of light from your inventory, but with this glitch you can trick the game into actually burning up the bowl of light. To do this, use menu overloading to trick the game into thinking that your wooden bow is actually the bow of light, so that when you set the bow on fire and lose it, you will actually be losing the bow of light. By clipping into the Yiga clan base, you can actually bait out these guards and have them follow you all around the world. These enemies can still harm you, but it is still quite funny seeing these guys at different locations. Keep in mind, taking them places can take a while though as they move extremely slow. 
Adding on to the previous glitch, the Yiga Clan guards can be disarmed and will just swing nothing at you when attacking. All you need for this glitch is bring them to Gerudo Town and try and enter the town. They will then get the weapons taken away and be completely harmless. Thanks guys for making it this far into the video. If you enjoyed, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.